Hey guys, Jen here. Oh, well, apparently around 1 o'clock is going to be around 1.30 every day, so <laughs> I should just say around 1.30. Um, cool. So welcome to the live stream today. I'm going to be talking about how to know who you're targeting with your books. Um, and this is really, really important because um, if you don't know who it is that you're targeting, it's really hard to do good book marketing. Because again, if you don't know who you're targeting, you're just sort of throwing stuff out there and hoping that it sticks, which is never a good idea. So you always want to know who it is you're targeting. And this is true whether you're selling books or you're selling something else. So, you know, think about other companies or authors that you follow. Like they all know who it is that they're targeting with their their message, with their marketing efforts, with their advertising efforts. They always know. So, you know, Apple knows specifically the type of person they're trying to attract to buy their products. So it's somebody who thinks different. It's somebody who's creative, somebody who, um, you know, knows that they're not the status quo, doesn't want to be the status quo, wants to, you know, live a dream life and have, you know, something different than what most people have. Like that's Apple. That's the kind of people that they're targeting with their products. <clears throat> now, that's not to say that other people don't buy their products, but their marketing and everything that they create as a business targets that one type of person. And so same thing with your books. If you want to sell more books, you have to attract more ideal readers because when you attract ideal readers, you'll automatically sell more books. And there are definitely readers and then there are ideal readers. So the difference being ideal readers are people who are very targeted specific to the type of reader that you want to attract to your books. And then a regular reader is just someone who maybe came across your book or um, who, you know, got a copy of it somehow, or maybe they won a copy or you did like a sale or something, they picked up a copy, but they're not really the ideal readers. And you can tell this based on like a lot of times if you go to the reviews of people's books and you see negative reviews um, or you see people complaining about stuff that doesn't really make sense, like why are they complaining about the formatting or why are they complaining that, you know, they don't like that the author dropped the F-bomb or something. That's how you know that that's not an ideal reader because an ideal reader would never care about that stuff. An ideal reader would never, you know, oh my God, she said the F word or oh my God, you know, this is not formatted properly. An ideal reader doesn't care because they just love the information or they love the story. And so that's what matters to them. And that's how you know you found an ideal reader. So obviously our goal as authors is to attract ideal readers because the more ideal readers we have, the more we're actually going to have people buying our books and buying them over and over again as we put more of them out there. So when you're thinking about your ideal readers, and again, this is really important, I think it's something that most people don't think about when they're writing a book. So they're not thinking, oh, who am I gonna sell this book to when I'm finished with it? But that's a question as a professional author that you really need to think about. And it's also a big part of what I say, you know, that pro writer mindset. So um, having a pro writer mindset is not just, oh, I believe in myself and I believe I can sell books, but it's also, I'm going to act from a place that a professional writer would act from. And so a professional writer, even if they're writing fiction, even if they're writing, you know, a story of some kind, they're always thinking about who is going to end up with this book. So who's going to end up with it in their hands? Who's going to read it? You have to think about that stuff. That's a part of being a pro writer because when you think about that stuff, it actually makes it easier for you to develop your marketing, to figure out who you're talking to, and, and to put yourself in the right places where your ideal readers are going to find you. So you always want to know who you're targeting. So like I said, if you are writing fiction, you have a genre that you're catering to. If you are writing nonfiction, you have a topic of some kind or you have a result that you're helping people get through your book. And all of that is going to be helping you to figure out who you're targeting. So let's talk through some specifics of what you should consider. So first off, and again, this just before I go into that even, the reason, again, that you should be thinking about this and that you should really know ahead of time who you're focusing on with your marketing, with your, you know, the books that you're selling is because when you have this answer, when you know who you're targeting. So like, for example, with my books, I target emerging 1% authors. So I call them 1% authors, meaning they are the authors that don't just talk about writing books, but they actually do it. They go all the way. They write the books. They put them out there. So those are the people I'm writing for. I'm helping people who want to have the dream writing career, the dream writing life. Those are the people I write my books for because those are the people that I care about, that I want to attract to my books and to the work that I do. And so I know this going in. So automatically it answers the questions. Where should I be hanging out online? 
So obviously we don't have a ton of time to spend on marketing. So where are you wanting to focus your time? Well, that's going to be based on where you're going to find your target reader. So if your target readers are, you know, young adults, they're young, you know, young adults, you write young adult fiction. Well, automatically, you know that you're going to go to the social media sites where young adults hang out. So for you, that could be Snapchat. It could be, you know, Instagram. It could be Facebook. I mean, it's really, you're going to have to do some research to find out where are the best sites for people of an age group that you are targeting or, you know, where are people who are in their 50s hanging out if that's your target readership. Easy things to figure out once you know who you're going after. So by knowing I'm going after emerging 1% authors, I'm going to be looking for people who already have books out there or who are working on getting a book out there right now. I know that Facebook is a great place because I know that when I go on Facebook, I get a lot of response and I get a lot of interactions. So I know that Facebook is a great place for me to do my marketing. Um, I also do Instagram because Instagram has my target audience as well. It turns out that most people on Instagram are older. So they're in their like 30s and 40s. And yeah, there are some younger people, but most of the younger people are doing Snapchat. So um, I'm not on Snapchat because my target audience is 45 plus. So most of the people who follow me who read my stuff are age 45 plus and Snapchat really isn't the place that they're hanging out. So I don't need to spend time there. And I wouldn't know that obviously, if I didn't know who I was targeting, which is why it's so important to know who you're targeting. Because when you know that, you can automatically cross out certain things. Snapchat wouldn't work for me. Or, you know, this new social media site wouldn't work for me because it's too young of an audience. Simple. It it just makes it easier for you to know, this is where I'm going to spend my time and my effort doing my marketing. Because when I do that, I'm going to get some results. Whereas if I just start putting stuff on random sites where my audience isn't hanging out, then I'm not going to get the results that I really want. And so then I'm spending time doing marketing and it's not getting me anywhere. So that's why it's really important to know who it is you're targeting. And when you have this, again, it also answers the question, what should I say? So a lot of the things I hear from authors is, well, I want to create content, but I don't know what to create or I don't know how to create it. And it's like, well, when you know who you're targeting, it answers the question automatically because now I know my target readers obviously are 45 plus. They're people who are busy. They have busy lives. They don't have a lot of free time, but they really have this dream of getting a book done and getting a book out there. And so I give them things like how to do 10 minute marketing activities and, you know, things like that, because I know these are the things that my audience struggles with. And so you just have to think about that for your own audience. If you have, you know, again, if you're a YA author and you write YA fantasy, well, then you know that you're going to create content that a YA fantasy reader would enjoy, whether that's some sort of a, you know, photo thing or doing a teaser video or reading something or giving them, you know, a short story or something that just like brings them into your world that you've created with your novel. That's the whole thing about knowing who you're targeting and then being able to create content for them. Okay, so now some things to consider for when you're trying to figure out who you're targeting. So obviously it starts with the book. So if you are writing a book on a certain topic, for example, like my book, The 15 Minute Writer, I knew that I was targeting emerging authors who maybe have either put their writing dream on the back burner or set it aside for some reason because they just haven't had time. So I'm giving them the solution. Here is a way to start writing for 15 minutes a day that's going to build up into a consistent practice where you're now going to actually be able to finish your book and possibly multiple books over and over again. So I'm thinking about that as I'm creating this book and I'm wondering, okay, what would somebody, you know, what would my target reader want to know about? What struggles would they have? What questions would they have? And this allows me to put together in the book the content that I know my ideal reader is going to need to actually enjoy the book. So like that's been one of my most successful books and it's the one that's gotten the most reviews without me having to ask for it. At this point, it's got like 41 reviews on Amazon. I didn't ask for most of those. It came from the fact that the book was very targeted. It was very focused on one result. So you're not getting, you know, multiple results from it. You're getting one, which is you're going to start writing and you're going to start doing a 15 minute writing practice every single day consistently. That's the result if you do, you know, everything in the book. So thinking about that ahead of time, even with your fiction, same thing. You want to be thinking about ahead of time. Would this, you know, would this story idea, would this topic of the book be of interest to my ideal reader. So if you're writing YA fantasy, you're going to have a question of what would a YA fantasy reader enjoy this story? If not, what can you do to change it so that they would? Or what can you do to add something to it that would be of interest to them so that it's still your story, but you're still targeting a reader? Because again, you're not writing just to write, you're writing because you want to be read and you want to publish and get a book out there. So if you don't already have one out there, this is a really important thing to think about now if you already do have a book out there, 
then you want to think kind of backtracking. Okay, now that the book's out there, who is it that would be most interested in this story or this topic? And working backwards from there to figure out, okay, you know, this is where they're hanging out. This is the kind of person that they are. And the more you know and understand your ideal readers, the more you can really target your marketing to that specific person. So considering your genre obviously is a big deal because if you are a romance writer, you don't want to be doing marketing that targets, you know, YA fantasy because that wouldn't go together. And I know it sounds stupid, but I see authors doing that all the time because they believe that they have to target everybody. And that is probably one of the biggest mistakes that people make with marketing is thinking that they are trying to talk to everybody. You're not. And if you try to talk to everybody, you're going to end up talking to nobody. And the reason is because there's just too much noise out there. There's too much going on. People aren't going to pay attention to it if it's not specific to them. And so if you're trying to get every reader in the world to read your books, that's actually a big mistake. Because while, yeah, it'd be great to have, you know, thousands and millions of people reading your books, you don't want to just target everybody. You want to target a specific type of reader. And then from there, what ends up happening is more people who are like that reader are attracted to your books and are attracted to your marketing and wanting to read your stuff. So it's a, you know, again, it's a big mistake to not know this stuff ahead of time and to think you're targeting everybody. And this happens a lot. Like if you see in Facebook groups, people join them and then all of a sudden they just start posting promos for their book. What do with this group topic or this has, you know, this book is not anything to do with, you know, I've seen like in fiction groups, people are posting nonfiction. Well, this is a fiction group. Why would you post nonfiction in here? That's not the right marketing channel. Like it automatically tells you that because it's a fiction group. So it doesn't make sense to spend time posting your nonfiction book in a fiction group. It's just, you know, again, it's thinking about this stuff ahead of time and making sure that you're maximizing your marketing efforts so that you're not always posting stuff randomly. You're actually targeting people. So you know, okay, this book promo is made for this certain person and this is the right place to post it. And you're not just drive by promoting. So I think when people drive by promote, Number one, it's because they don't understand marketing. And number two, it's because they don't know who they're targeting. Because if you know who you're targeting, you're not going to just drive by promote your book. And what I mean by drive by promote, in case you don't understand that phrase, is basically when people join a Facebook group and then they just start posting promos every day and they're not interacting and they're not actually a member of the group really. They're just there to post promos. That's it. I call that drive by promoting because you're just stopping by, dropping a promo and then going to the next group and doing the same thing. So it just becomes a drive-by promo, basically. Bad idea. Don't do that. And again, when I see people doing that, I know automatically it means that they don't understand marketing and that they don't know who they're targeting. Because when you know who you're targeting, you're going to show up in the right places and you're not going to do stuff like that. So it's really important to think about ahead of time. What is the genre that I write or what is the topic I'm covering and who would be interested in this? Okay, so some other things to consider. Who is, who is in need of this topic or this um, this genre. So a lot of the times when we're writing books, we don't think about this, but the two reasons that people go online looking for stuff or the two reasons they're online, you know, watching videos and checking stuff out on social media is because they want to be educated. They want to be entertained or both. So if you're writing fiction, then your goal is entertaining them. And if you're writing nonfiction, your goal is to educate them on something or to teach them how to do something or help them deal with something that they're dealing with right now or struggling with. That's the whole point of it. So if you're writing fiction, again, you're entertaining people. So think about it from that perspective. What can I do to entertain my ideal readers? What would be of interest to them? What would excite them and make them want to share this, you know, thing that I've created and, and go from there. Maybe you create like, you know, little, you drop some characters to look like the characters in your book and you put them out there and have, you know, like little, um, story clips and then you let people know the book's available, but doing little things to entertain them. So like memes, creating memes is a cool way to entertain your audience. If that's something that they would be of interest in, obviously, again, this doesn't work for everything. So that's why it's important to know who you're targeting because then you can actually not have to stress out about, well, what do I create? Cause automatically, you know, well, I would not create a lot of memes because honestly, like, again, my people are 45 plus. They're probably not that into memes because memes weren't really a thing when they were growing up. So, but younger people. So if you're looking for like a, you know, YA audience, memes are like the thing they love them. And so that would be a cool thing for you to create. Maybe like memes for your book or just little, you know, funny things that make them laugh and that get them interested in what you do. So it's again, thinking about who you're targeting and then how they would be wanting to get content from you. So are they wanting to be educated? Are they wanting to be entertained? Or again, if you can do both, that's even better. So if you can educate them and entertain them at the same time, 
that's perfect. And that's sort of what I try to do. So obviously I'm not that entertaining maybe, but I just, I like to do live streams, do videos, uh, write blog posts, put together like fun challenges and, um, you know, like freebies and things like that, because I want my audience to have a good time and to realize that like writing doesn't have to be this boring little thing you do. It can be really fun and it can be really engaging. And, you know, again, because writers tend to be very, um, like loners and we tend to spend a lot of time by ourselves, it's fun to have community and it's fun to bring people into it which is why I run a Facebook group. It's why I do free challenges so that people are all working on stuff at the same time because I just think there's uh, a need for community in the writing space. And so that's what I create with my content and with the stuff that I put out there for my ideal readers. Now, of course, if I'm talking about my novels, that would be a totally different readership because my novels are for people who read chiclet. So chiclet readers are going to want totally different content than somebody who writes books because they're not writing books, they're reading books big difference there. So when I put out teasers for my book, it's things that I think would be of interest to my ideal reader. So I'll put a snippet of like one of the love scenes or a little bit of the romance because that's what chiclet readers are looking for. That's what they want to see. So again, thinking about who it is you're targeting and what they would be interested in. Okay. Some other things to consider who is actively looking for what you're putting out there. So if you write nonfiction, for example, who is actively looking for this type of book? So whether they're, and again, I'm just going to give another example from one of mine. I have um, a book about, it's called Button Chair. So basically it helps people who have a hard time with productivity, who, you know, procrastinate a lot. It's a book that helps them get past that and start actually doing their writing consistently. So I'm thinking, okay, who is out there looking for this? Well, it's people who have procrastinated a lot. It's people who consider themselves writers, but are actually doing the work. Um, It's people who are struggling with getting words on the page. Those are people looking for that sort of solution and my book delivers it. So I'm going to focus on how can I get my book in front of people who procrastinate and people who um, are writers but aren't doing the writing. So, um, you know, people who have that writing block. So again, I talked about this in my video yesterday. You know, you can go on Twitter and you can search for people who've written about writer's block on their post and then connect with them and start talking to them. And then maybe if they seem like, okay, this is someone who I would love to introduce my book to, then you can do that at that point. But it's, it's thinking ahead of time of who is actually looking for this book or who's out there searching for this. Now, if you're doing fiction, same thing. It's a, I mean, slightly different, but same thing as far as who's out there looking for, you know, YA fantasy. What type of fantasy are they looking for? What stuff, um, what do they want to read about? And just thinking about this stuff, because when you do that, and the more you can really get into the mindset of your ideal reader, the more you're going to have um, the opportunity to create better marketing that actually sells more books. Um, Okay, another thing to think about is who doesn't know that they need this, but they do. So this was something that I learned recently at a workshop that I attended, and they talked about the fact that most people who are doing marketing of their books um, are actually marketing to the people that already are out there looking for a solution. So for example, if people are out there looking for writing books because they're struggling with getting words on the page or they're procrastinating and they don't want to anymore, they're out there actively looking for books or articles or videos to help them deal with that. Cool. But there's a whole another readership of people who aren't aware that that's the problem that they have. So they're out there not looking for anything actively because they don't know that they have a problem. Maybe they're not writing and they feel stressed out and they feel like, well, I procrastinate and I'm lazy, but they don't realize that, oh, I'm doing this because of all these other things that are stopping me, you know, basically getting in the way of me doing my writing. So they don't know that they need the solution, which is, you know, how to overcome procrastination and how to get your words on the page. They're not thinking about that stuff because in their mind, they haven't even gotten to that point where they see the problem and are ready to address it. They don't even know they have it. So it's a whole other readership of people that you could be thinking about. Who doesn't know that they have this problem, but does? And who can I be, you know, targeting to actually help them to see the problem and then address it with my book? Same thing with entertainment. It doesn't matter if you're writing fiction or nonfiction. This stuff is all the same. So yeah, tweak slightly based on, well, you're writing fiction. It's more entertainment purposes. But again, people are bored. They're going online because they're bored and they want to, you know, find something entertaining. Well, your book could be that thing. It could be the thing that entertains them that they spend their time reading. So how are you going to get that in front of them? And how are you going to find the people who don't know that they need your book yet? So um, these are just some things to think about when it comes to targeting an ideal reader. Because believe me, when you have ideal readers, you will sell books. It's just, it's a given because an ideal reader is always going to be interested in what you're doing. 
And I can tell easily when I look at reviews of my books, I can tell who's an ideal reader and who didn't quite get it. And the ones who didn't quite get it are not ideal readers. They're just people who picked up the book because it was 99 cents or, um, you know, grabbed a copy because it was free one day. But they're not ideal readers because they don't get it. So then they'll leave comments like, well, I like this book, but then she said the F word and I don't like that. And it's like, okay, you're not an ideal reader. My ideal readers don't care about swear words. They use them themselves. Um, they're a fan of them. They, they prefer being able to swear. You know, they don't like that they can't, you know. So for me, th that's how I can tell an ideal reader versus a non-ideal reader. Somebody who gets the stuff that I put out there. Someone who reads it and is like, yes, that totally resonated with me. It totally helped me make changes in my writing life. That's an ideal reader. A non-ideal reader is somebody who goes in sort of with their own agenda. So they kind of go in thinking, well, I don't know how good this is going to be. Or maybe they have an attitude about the author or, you know, they're just, they have an attitude about the topic or something like that. So when they go into the story or into the book, they're just sort of reading it. But then they're in their mind thinking about all these reasons why it's not good enough, why they're, they don't like it and all this. That's not an ideal reader. An ideal reader is somebody who understands this is something that can help me. I have this problem and I want to address it. And then they read the book or I'm bored. I'm interested in finding a new YA fantasy novel and oh, here happens to be a new one. Let me check it out. Not to say the people who read your book and didn't enjoy it are not ideal readers, but I would say they pretty much aren't because an ideal reader is always going to be somebody who resonates with your message, who resonates with you and the way you write and the, the way you talk. So um, that's why it's important to just know who you're targeting because like for me, Again, I know my ideal readers don't care about swearing. And so I swear in my videos sometimes and I swear in my books and in my blog posts. And yeah, of course, people give me attitude about it and send me emails and say, you would be so much better if you didn't swear and this, that and the other. I get that all the time, but I don't care because I know people who send me emails like that are not my ideal readers. People who are my ideal readers would never say that. They would, they would just blow over it. No big deal. They don't care about swear words. Not a big deal to them. And that's how you know the difference. But again, I wouldn't know this if I didn't know who I was targeting. So that's why it's really important to think about it ahead of time. Who am I targeting? You know, what is it they need from me and how can I deliver it to them? So uh, just to kind of go back through the things I gave you to consider, the list, um, consider your genre, consider your topic if you're writing nonfiction, um, consider who it is that needs this genre or this topic. So whether it's a fiction reader or a nonfiction reader, who is it that needs to read this book? Um, who is actively looking for your book or your type of book? So maybe not your book specifically, but who's actively looking for a solution that your book provides or actively looking to read a story about fantasy and your book is that story. So think about who's actively looking and then also who doesn't know that they need it, but they do. And again, that's important because if you don't think about those people, then you're sort of closing off a whole other section of readers who could potentially love you because they don't know that they have a problem. So at first it's just telling them that they have the problem and then addressing it with a solution. Oh, here's my book. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments now. Otherwise I'm wrapping this up and I'll be back tomorrow with another live stream on how to sell more books. We are going to get into a whole bunch of different topics this week. Some that are going to address specifically how to make book sales and others that are more the underlying, um, what I call like metaphysics of writing which is the inner stuff, it's the mindset stuff, and it's the actual like getting yourself to a place where you believe in yourself and believe that you can do this and aren't afraid to put yourself out there. So there is definitely a combination and you need both because if you don't have that, um, the metaphysics of writing nailed down, then you'll never actually do the actions that you need to actually sell books because you'll still feel inside that you're not worthy or you don't deserve to have readers or you, you know, worry about, what people are going to think and you can't worry about any of that stuff. You have to just get yourself to a point where you believe in yourself enough to just do the work and it doesn't matter what anyone thinks. Uh, oh, Selena. Hi. What if you have multiple genres or don't want to stick to just one? That's okay. Then at that case, you would just have a different target reader for each book. So, or each genre and you would, that's a really important distinction because you can't sell romance novels to people who don't read romance novels. So, if you have romance novels and you have thrillers, you wouldn't be targeting the same reader with that because obviously thriller readers might not read romance or romance readers might not read thrillers. So at that point, you're targeting two different people with the marketing. It's totally okay. You can still have one website because again, you are the brand, you are the author and you're sort of that overarching umbrella where everything else falls under. So you're cool still having all your stuff on one website, but when you're doing marketing stuff, so like for example, um, earlier last month in, in January, I did a live stream series 
on um, the story engineering book by Larry Brooks and I talked about all the different things that he talked about in the book and went through it all. Now that was very targeted to people who write fiction and people who um, not only write fiction but maybe struggle with how to get that idea in their head and get it down on the page. So that was the target for that. Now this live stream series is for people who want to sell more books. So it's for authors who already have a book out there or who are in the process of getting a book out there and now want to know how do I sell books. So now that's a totally different audience that I'm targeting with these videos. Now I'm still sending them out to my whole email list and letting people know if people aren't interested, they can just, you know, ignore it and not worry about it. But I'm just putting it out there because this is a part of me. My, my branding is that I do marketing and that I help people write books. So it's sort of the combination, but it's who I am. So it becomes a part of my brand, but I don't have to target the same person each time. So I'm sort of taking that one target reader, which would be, you know, emerging 1% authors, and then I'm breaking it down into, okay, who still needs help writing the book? Who needs help selling the book? And then doing it that way. So I'm targeting different people, but at the same time, I'm still doing marketing. And people are still sort of getting to know me and getting to know what I'm all about. So you don't have to stick to just one genre. Don't have to. I write fiction. I write nonfiction. I do both. And I have them both on my blog. And it's cool. Like, no one, no one has issue with it. And I think a lot of authors today especially um, write multiple genres. And I think that's a great thing because we're multi-passionate. You know, we're multi-passionate. And that's my audience mostly is people who have multiple passions and they don't want to choose just one thing. And I don't believe that you have to. I think that you should write about all the different things that interest you, whether that's fiction, nonfiction, you know, three different genres of fiction and, you know, two different topics in nonfiction, whatever. It's totally up to you. You're the author. So just keep in mind that you can do that, but you're going to want to think about separately who is going to be interested in this book and then targeting the marketing for that. So whether you're putting it out on your social media, we'll just know that, okay, this is a, a promo for my fiction book. So I'm going to target the readership who would actually be interested in this and not try to get it to people who aren't interested. But again, it's cool. You don't have to try to pick one genre because most of the time you're not going to be able to. If you're anything like me, you're multi-passionate, it's impossible to pick one thing. I've tried. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. I've tried. And I definitely feel like I'm a lot more focused now as far as like I, I work with writers and I teach writers and I write stuff for writers mostly. But... If I decided in the future that I wanted to do something else, I would just add it into the mix and it's just a part of who I am. So you become the brand and then what you do just becomes sort of a, a, like again, you're the umbrella and then everything falls under that. So don't worry about writing multiple genres, go for it. Okay, wrapping this up now. Thank you so much for joining me. I will be back tomorrow with another live stream to help you sell more books and I will catch you next time.